Eric Darling here <clears throat> with uh, for now Eric Darling data, but uh, I've got I've got paperwork in to change my company name to uh, to Grimes's baby name. So that's going to be fun. That should that should make paperwork interesting, right? So uh, we're going to record a a hopefully hit video here. I've got everything going for me. I have pretty good equipment. Uh, I've got interesting topic. Uh, and now all I need is for you to watch it, I guess. Well, actually, is it interesting? I don't know. It might be interesting. It depends on what your depends on what your kink is, I guess. So uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, is forcing query plans in query store, and an interesting gotcha that I that I ran into. So uh, first thing I want to do is clear out query store right there. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, I've already got this index created on the users table in a column called reputation uh, because I want to get two different query plans based on how we query the users table. Now, uh, both of the queries that I'm going to run at first are going to use literal values in the WHERE clause. So this is going to be the literal value 1, and this is going to be the literal value 2. And if I run this first query, we will get back an execution plan, I promise, an actual execution plan, an actual factual execution plan. We, maybe we'll start calling them literal execution plans, because they are literally what happened. And we'll call estimated plans figurative plans because that's just what the optimizer figured it would do. I think that makes sense, right? So uh, right over here we have uh, our, our, our literal execution plan uh, where we start by scanning the, the clustered index on the post table, doing some hashy bitmappy stuff, and then down here joining off to the users table. But the clustered index on the users table, not the non-clustered index that we created. This will all change. This will all get freaky, deaky, wiki wild, wiki wild. <laughs> when we run this query, that's going to look for reputation equals two. For reputation equals two, we start with an index seek into our non-clustered index on the users table. We do a key lookup back to the clustered index to get that display name column because the display name column is not in our non-clustered index. And then we do some uh, some hashy bitmappy stuff over here and then down the bottom, well then on the inner side of the join rather, we join to, to the clustered index on the post table. That, that, that song remains the same, but the stuff with the users table was much different. Now, in all different DMBs, all different parts of SQL Server, uh, queries get identified in different ways. In Query Store, you have a query ID and a plan ID, but in lots of the more tr uh, traditional uh, DMBs, we have like query hash, query plan hash, SQL handle, plan handle, all sorts of different hashes, different like binary values that, um, that SQL Server uses to represent uh, execution plans. And uh, what's funny to me is that if we go and look in the uh, sys.querystore query table, rolls right off the tongue. Thanks whoever designed that. If we uh, run this query and we look at what SQL Server thinks of our execution plan, or other of our queries rather, uh, we will get one query hash for both of those queries, but we will have two query IDs for it. So uh, SQL Server th treated this at the, at the query level like it's one query, but query store treated it like two different queries. And I'll show you what I mean. If we run this, to get some more details on these queries. And yes, we do need to join one, two, three, four different views together to get this information out. Uh, we will see that we have uh, across the board, uh, query ID one has plan ID one, uh, one execution and use 3.5 seconds of C uh, CPU time on average, but averages just really aren't as powerful when there's one execution. But that's for reputation equals one. We can see that over here. Query ID two, down the bottom is uh, also plan ID 2 with one execution and 1.4 seconds of CPU time and of course that is where reputation equals 2. Now if you found some super duper mega awesome script on the internet and uh, you wanted to make let's say query ID 1 use plan ID 2 because that uses less CPU, and you're like, wow, I could totally make this query better by just having it use this different execution plan. Well, you can't really do that. So uh, there's a store procedure for a query store called uh, whatever. Uh, so let's say that we want to make query ID 1 use plan ID 2 because it uses less CPU. So we'll plug query ID 1 into here and plan ID 2 into here. 
And when we run this, we will get an error because the plan ID 2 is not associated with query ID 1. Even though if we look back into the DMVs, well, they're, they're nearly the same query aside from that thing. They can't sh Query store says we can't share an execution plan between you two. Now, this isn't something that's true of plan guides. Granted, plan guides have many, many, many other things that are strange with and, and wrong with them, but uh, we would be able to do this. Now, the optimizer would check to make sure we weren't doing anything completely asinine. Like, if we had a query that was like select count from posts, the op and we wanted and we said, hey, use this plan guide where you select count from votes. The optimizer would be like, you're up to no good. I'm not going to go through with that. Um, but here, even though, like, logically and semantically, like, really every other way possible, these two queries should be able to share the same plan because they get different query IDs because of those literal values. Uh, they, they can't. So how how you can fix this or how you can get around this is if you uh, use parameterized queries, all right? So uh, what we're going to do is, you now you could use a store procedure. You, I'm going to use SP execute SQL because it's a little bit quicker. Uh, not faster, like, performance-wise, just quicker to, like, have on sc screen and show you. Uh, but I'm going to run this, and uh, we're going to run it for reputation equals one first. And I have a recompile hint in here because I want to get two different execution plans. I want do I want new execution plans here. So I'm going to run this for reputation equals one. And note that this is parameterized. This is not the, the crappy, hacky kind of dynamic SQL that gets people fired because hackers uh, destroy their database. This is the good, safe kind of dynamic SQL that, uh, that handsome tattooed consultants use all day long. Hello. So uh, we're going to, that's, uh, I believe that, should, that one comes before two, so it should be reputation equals one. And we can look over at the query plan and see that, yes, indeed, we got that, that plan that we wanted. Now, I'm going to run this for reputation equals two, and we're going to get the key lookup plan, which is intentional. I want that to happen. There's a reason that recompile hint is in there. So now we see that we got that same key lookup plan again. So that's good. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, when I go and I, I go back to sys dot query store query for some reason, and I go and I look for uh, other query hashes that have more than one distinct plan associated with them, and I run this, we still only have that one result in there. That's from that's the one from before a query hash that ends in eight zero four four with two query IDs associated with it. But now, when we look in the query, when we do we run our 70,000 join query to get four columns back. Uh, now we have two more lines in here. And these two lines here, they, they start a little bit different. These ones have little parameters at the beginning of them. Right? Let's see that reputation int thing there. And if we uh, make this column a little bit wider, we can see that there's a difference. So this top one is where reputation equals one literal. This one is where reputation equals two literal. But in these, this is parameterized. So we just see that reputation parameter in there. So now, when, when we have one query ID across the both of them, but two different plan IDs. So this means that we could, we could tell query ID 5 to always use execution plan 4. So let's go try to do that. Remember, query ID 5, we want to use 4 because we found this awesome script on the internet, and it said, hey, you know what you should do? You should force plans where you have a better one. And you were like, okay, I'm going to do that because I don't, I don't feel like doing actual work. So uh, we're going to say query ID 5, use plan ID 4. And we plug that in here, and we plug that in here. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. Whew. I'm going to start doing cardio or something. Just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, so we're going to run this. And this now, now we will be allowed to associate that other plan ID with that other query ID. So uh, if you are the type of person who uh, gets cranky about SQL Server performance, uh, and you are the type of person who gets cranky about, I don't know, stuff like <laughs> regressions or, I don't know, things going wrong <laughs> with queries, um, you know, you should make some attempt to use parameterized code if you, are, if you wanted to use uh, a query store to force execution plans. Otherwise, SQL Server will do what it does like when it compiles a lot 
uh, uh, when it like sees literal values and queries and keeps compiling new plans for them. Query store does the same thing. It's just like I don't know you, and 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 it, and it gives them new query IDs, and then and then you can't force query plans across query IDs, and uh, then you actually have to go tune queries, and that sucks. It's always life is always a lot better when you can just hit a button, <laughs> isn't it? It is for me anyway. All right. Thanks for watching.